could sit and cry Well, golly gee, what have you done to me? Well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore the gentleman of drag racing Bud Forble and, and, and he's a real friend I, I can't say enough about him we've done in many interviews before but it's never enough and I know you people have commented out there that have watched the show and have said you know that Bud Forble he's a real he's a real gentleman the, the, the name is very befitting so you know what we got to spend a few minutes absolutely right. um, I know everybody around here wants to take their picture and uh, they want to sign autographs wow. and everything that's, that's what great. we come for that's, that's what great. we come you for know, yeah we how much they loved it we enjoy doing it and love to do things with it for the fans because they did things for us for many years and also all the uh, the uh, fellows and uh, competitors and the drivers and, it's just a great to meet all you, plus, plus the journalists and people like you, or the newscasters, and it's just nice to meet all of you. Um, there's a ton of these Mopars over here today. Oh, I They're know. All, oh, boy, I, I, spoke to, I spoke to Jack Worst before. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's like it's Mopar Alley, you know? Yeah, I it mean. really is. Uh, there's a lot of them missing that I really feel bad about, but... Which uh, ones? Well, a couple of them, like is, uh, is Phil Bonner now, who's having an eye problem. He's got a macular degeneration. Oh, you know what? I, I, I spoke to Dick Estevez, but he didn't mention anything about it. Yeah, well, uh, Phil sent me, uh, last month he sent me an invitation to come to his 75th birthday party down in Georgia. But I had a tough schedule at that time, and I wrote him back a note that I couldn't come. Oh, okay. And I'm sorry now that I couldn't make it. I didn't realize he had that problem. But I, Dick told me all that and brought yeah. me up to date. Yeah. Um, who else is missing? I don't know. There's quite a few guys well, here. That, of course, uh, you know Ronnie Sox has been missing for the second right. year now. And uh, he usually didn't come here. But uh, Dick Landy passed away this year yes yeah we lost dick landy yep yeah. and yep. Uh, we lost some of the top people we lost a couple other ones that i can I just can't put my finger on right I now know, um uh, to digress a little bit i'm sure you saw it on television it was uh, a real shame about uh connie coletta's kid oh that was a terrible accident he going over 300 mile an hour wasn't yeah. he oh sure oh boy you just don't have much of a chance when something happens that's, at that that's speed. for sure that's for sure. That's really uh, it's, it's changed so much, uh, Bud, you know, that, um, I don't know, you know, would you, if you could, do you think that you'd want to go that fast today, the way these guys are going? Well, I don't mind going that fast if I have room. <laughs> room to stop. <laughs> room to stop, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah I, All right. I'm used to fast jet planes and things, and I, and I, uh, I like high speeds. But I also like it comfortable to get stopped and uh, right. have a thing. Well, the high speed you got in the air. Not many people know that you were a commercial pilot. <laughs> yeah, I was a commercial and then as a fighter pilot in two wars. Right. But uh, I've always been used to fast speeds and doing those kind of uh, aerobatic planes. I had them too for a while. And uh, it's very interesting uh, to go fast 
uh, but for racing, and it's so much work before you get around to the actual driving, you, you, when you get older, you lose your ambition. That's true. That the enthusiasm is uh, taking right. a strain. You know? Right, because you're not used to that much work. So tell me, to uh, digress from uh, drag racing and, and uh, the sport in general, how are you and Barbara doing with your dancing? Wonderful. We go ballroom dancing two, three nights a week to all live bands, and we have a wonderful time. Uh, after uh, tomorrow's show, we're going up to uh, Beaver Springs to the uh, racetrack, and after that, we're leaving and going for three days to Indianapolis to the uh, Indiana Roof. Is it uh, a, a competition? What? Yes. No, no, this is just for fun, but uh, we have fun when there's no competition. But you do competitive? At times, but normally we're not competitive. We, we, we don't like to have much pressure. It's more fun when you're just that. Right, enjoying. when you're having fun. Yeah. Right. So right. What's, your, what's your schedule after Indy? Where will you go? You're going to be stay home for a while and relax? <laughs> well, about every month we have a three-day dance somewhere in some part of the oh, country. Okay. We were last month down in... Uh, Opryland uh, and down in uh, Nashville, but and uh, they had ballroom moved in there and rented the area and they had ballroom dancing there and beautiful place. We had a good time there. And before that, we had uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, where they had a big three-day dance at St. Patrick's weekend. But we have something going on all the time. We're going to go to Iowa here later in August. Uh, in uh, October, will you be going down to Nancy Wilson's uh, Henderson meet? I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that yet. We, I'm looking at our schedule now. We may have a three-day meet that I can't make that, but if I can, I will. Right. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. I was going to ask you about, oh, Texas. Are you still traveling back and forth? Yes, right. Uh, in January and February, we usually go to Texas, and we dance about every day for two months. And then we come back up here, and we go down to the Rio Grande Valley, where it's a beautiful place. The temperature is the same as Miami-type temperatures. And uh, the, it's just a, it's a nice place, and you don't have the bugs, the Florida bugs. Right. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> So, you know what? You're still doing a lot of traveling. I mean, you know, you're really active. Yeah, I, uh, I got to cut down on my gasoline, but uh, I'm oh, still well, doing a lot do. of it. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm really doing a lot of that. Are you going to be here uh, tomorrow, too? Yes, I'll be here all day, Dennis. Will you? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, you know, maybe okay. getting a chance to talk to you again. Right. Maybe get a couple of the, uh, the Mopar guys. You know, right, we'll and you, may, together, not have, you know? may not have all this rear noise with this. Uh, well, no, that's okay. The audio's the picking us up. That's all that matters. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure, okay. you know. And, and it's a day to pleasure for you, and I'm glad you came it's Once in a while, I send you an email. I hope you get it. Oh, I do. I get all your yeah. emails, all the okay. political stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I and you know what? Um, stuff. You're on the same page as myself and all all the guys that I'm involved with. You see, some of the email that you sent me, other guys have sent me the same stuff. You know? Wonderful. And uh, I mean, Wonderful. I hate to get off on politics, but you know what? We're in trouble. I agree with you. We're We've got trouble. to keep going. Boy, oh boy. The right way. You know. So, yep. you know, we just hope for the best and get out and vote. Yep. I don't want change because change can go either way. That's for sure. You don't know what the change is going to be. <laughs> That's you right. know? They say things can't get worse. That's well, right. you know what? That's vote right. for the other guy and find you, out. Yeah, you bet. You bet. <laughs> okay. Thanks, right, for, thanks very much. Thank you. Dennis. Thank it's you. It's a real pleasure to be with you. For those of you that have not seen this gentleman, uh, now you have the opportunity to actually see the man behind the voice, the voice of drag racing, Mr. John Lundberg. Dennis, thank Welcome you very to much. Cars and us, pleasure to, 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 to get a few minutes with you. I know you're real busy. You just got an award, and uh, they gave you uh, an outstanding award for somebody that never did any drag racing. Well, I actually in the old days I did in the uh, in the very early 50s, but I had to make a decision in 1955 to either go to college or build a more aggressive car. And uh, one night, my father sat me down at the dinner table, <laughs> and and there was this. There's silver platter on the table uh, that that had a big cloth over it, okay? And and he said, w when my mother and, and, and sister were at the table, he said, ladies, uh, we'd like you to leave us alone for a while. John and I have to talk. Now, I don't know what your father told you when those kind of conversations took place, but to me, kind of death was pretty close, okay? <laughs> So what he told me was, he said, now, I know it's time for you to take another step in the sport of drag racing. And he said, 
I would imagine that would be building one of those dragster things. Now, this was in the spring of 1955. Okay. Wow. All right. And, and, and I said, yes, Dad. And he said, well, what would it cost to build one of those and have a spare car and a spare engine and, and really look? And I said, well, Dad, about $10,000. I remember 1955. Okay. All right. All right. And, and he said, okay, how much, how much would it cost, do you think, for you to go to a really fine engineering school and get an education? And I said, well, right about $10,000. And he said, that's right. With that, he peels the napkin off the plate and there's $10,000 in cash on the silver plate. And he said, all right, here's the deal. You can build a dragster by taking the money, and there will never be another dime in your life. Or you can leave it there, go to college, and we'll do whatever it takes. And it took me three hours to make the choice. What I chose to do was go to college. And so instead of drag racing, it was my goal then to talk about it. And that's what started my career. John, what was the first uh, announcement you made? What track? Well, I began announcing uh, it as kind of a, a, a spare time fun thing at a place called Central Michigan Dragway, which is located right in the middle of the state in Michigan farm country. And the first race I announced there in 1954, the track had yet to be paved. They actually ran on gravel. They did? Yes. Yeah, wow, that's early on for sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, and then, of course, we progressed on to... Uh, a wide variety of tracks, and I began to travel nationally in uh, 1963. And where, uh, what was your first major event that you felt was your major event? Well, the first major... Or your, your break, let me put well, it that way. Uh, exactly. Two breaks happened. In, 19, in the, in the uh, winter of 1963, two buddies of mine in Lansing, Michigan, Noah Canfield and Charlie Johnson, built a double-A modified fuel roadster called the Glass Chariot, and their goal was to stop at the AHRA Winter Nationals at Phoenix and then go to Bakersfield and race the baddest cars California had to offer in that class. And so I went with them, I, uh, being, a, being a rider along and right. gas provider, okay? All right. All, right. All right. And we went to the AHRA Winter Nationals uh, on the north side of Phoenix and then two weeks later to the Fuel and Gas Championships at Bakersfield. Now, I had never announced that event in my life. Nobody knew who I was. But the two announcers at that event went out on Saturday night and became hopelessly inebriated and, ah. and were very sick. Timing. And, and hallelujah, is everything. <laughs> we're hungover and sick on Sunday morning. They called me in, and I, now listen to this. This is like, this is like winning American Idol. Okay, the, being the last person standing, I got to announce Sunday at the Fuel and Gas Championships at Bakersfield, California, and it changed my life. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. There's a glorious blonde coming right up behind oh. us here. <laughs> miss <laughs> mi, mi, miss the, the first lady of drag racing. Yeah, Linda Vaughn. Yes. Anyway, uh, let go me, ahead. Let me ask you, uh, what stands out most in your mind of all the events that you uh, were at and you announced and everything, what's, what's your favorite or what well, stands out most? There are, there are probably three or four seminal events, but, but, but principal among those is the 1965 Superstock Nationals, uh, the event that's recalled with this reunion here. I mean, for the funny cars and Superstock, uh, you know, funny, funny cars weren't even excellent at the time. It was a factory experimental Superstock. And, and what happened was that for the first time in the country, everybody of repute was together in one place. And the whole nation was talking about it. And, you know, York, Pennsylvania, uh, the US 30 drag strip held some very significant drag events in those years and could, and could easily hold 5,000 people. That night, 20 showed up. And it was one of the most amazing events ever in the history of this sport. Now you're living uh, out in the Midwest, I'm going to say Arizona? Well, I was born and raised and lived for most of my life in the state of Michigan. In 1998, my wife and I relocated to Tucson, Arizona, and that's where we live now. Right. And what do you do? Do you do any, uh, any announcing at all, or, you know, what, what's like, your life I, like I now? Do, I do two or three of these kinds of events every year. And then uh, my business is I appraise unique and exotic motor vehicles. I heard them talk about with that when they gave you the award. So you have your own company doing that? Yes, we're called Southwest Valuations. And, uh, you know, we do every, the, the, the lowest evaluation I've done so far uh, was a lady who insisted that her 1963 Ford Falcon four-door sedan was a classic. classic. <laughs> and the most expensive car I've appraised so far 
is a one and a half million dollar Ferrari. Is that right? Yes, sir. And everything in between. I mean, it's more fun than a car guy ought to have. Sure. Okay. I'll bet. <laughs> and I really enjoy it. Uh, where do you go from here, John? Well, from here I go back home uh, because we've got two projects waiting, and one of them is an appraisal of a full-bodied 1965 top fuel dragster called Starlight 3. Um, any car shows in the future such as this? Well, there may. I'm I'm somewhat restricted in my travel at this time uh, due to business and my wife's health condition, but. Uh, I do two of these a year, and then I do, um, as an homage to the sport, uh, there's a very fine event held just south of Tucson, a little art community called Tubac, Arizona, uh, which is a 500 vehicle car show on a golf course, and I am the announcer for that event, and that's at this nice. point, that's everything. You know what? The award was uh, long in coming, long time in coming, of course, you're, you're very deserving of it. Everything they said about you was true. And it's a fact. Uh, you're a gentleman and a, and a scholar, and you've been a, a, a great person for, a representative for drag racing. Bless your heart. And, thank and you. Voice. Thank you so much. Bless your heart. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate well, it. Well, since we have Linda over here, oh, yeah. since we have Miss Vaughn over here, I know she's got a uh, line full of people, but uh, she did promise to talk to us for a bit anyway. Yeah. Linda, how have you been? It's been seven years, so how have you been? Oh, I've been wonderful. It's been seven years since I've seen you. But I, I was here last year, but John, how long has it been since I've seen you? Well, I think the last time we saw each other before here last yeah. year was probably five years. Five years, about right. five years. But I noticed he's getting like Tilly Savalas and all these sexy guys. What is it about these sexy, bald-headed men now? I don't know. That's coming from you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that. But he still has the voice. This man's got the greatest Definitely voice. Definitely does. One of the best entertainers, and I love working with him, and Jack Duffy and some of the great George Hurst and all that. We had a wonderful fun. We ain't through yes. yet. That's right. The Lord has blessed us, and we're still going. Hallelujah. That's Thank true. You. you look fantastic. Thank I mean, you. like I said, it's been a while, but you look terrific, and Thank it's, and it's great to see you. exercise and work out, but this is all, don't need it. This is all just you, Linda. But I've got rust on me. Uh, <laughs> I need to be restored. <laughs> hey, 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 guess what? Nobody notices that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. How about the show? It is a great show. Yeah, it's marvelous. Yeah. I, it, this thing just a, I increases in its diversity and the number of people who come every year. And, Linda, this, it wouldn't be what it is without you here to be part well, of it. Thank you. I missed you before last, and my heart was broken. And they brought me back last year, and I got a lot of folks this year. And I'm so proud that they bring the memorabilia from when I was growing up. And, and I, there's a couple of guys. There's my truck driver over there. He got mad at me while I go because I called his brother the truck driver. Well, you know, they all look alike. So. <laughs> but I was just so excited today. I saw three here in Linda's. Here's Linda's magazine. Oh, wow. Some pictures of you and I. Uh, some really nice stuff. Beautiful. And that makes my heart do lots of good things. It really does. Like I said, you look terrific. I don't want to hold you up from your fans. And uh, God bless. You know, we're looking forward to seeing you next year. God has blessed me. He's given me all these wonderful people and all the great fans of these well-made American cars. And I love it. Ain't that America? Hey, <laughs> Plain to see. You going to talk to these folks over here in line? No, no, no. I'm going to let you take care. They're Steve. They're Steve. I want to let you take care of them, man. They're all your fans. You know, know they've been waiting. They, you know how long they've been waiting? You know what time it is? Minutes. Well, I worked, They've been waiting here for before over, 7 o'clock. I worked over an hour extra today. I make it up, but I went and took a shower, and I came back relaxed and ra ready to go. So they waited 21 minutes on me. But, hey, listen, you know what? It's well worth the wait. Well worth the wait. Lynn, thanks so much. Our gracious host and star promoter of Muscle Car Madness and our former Northeast director of uh, NHRA, Darwin Dahl. And it's a pleasure to be out here again, Darwin, and the seventh uh, anniversary. This is terrific. Uh, I can't thank you enough for letting us come out and, and uh, videotape and do what we got to do. Well, it's our pleasure to have you with us, Dennis. We uh, we appreciate the coverage you give us, and and uh, you know what it's all about. This is a this is a reunion. Uh, York US 30 Dragway touched so many lives in this country. I mean, all over nationwide and especially uh, concentrated in the central Pennsylvania area. But uh, anyone that was anyone at some time or another raced at York. Ran York. And, you know, the, you, you say, well, let's go to York. 
and everybody knew exactly where you were going because uh, it wasn't that they were going to to the uh, the uh, courthouse in York. It was that they were going to that drag strip. Yeah, that's it. And that's that's where they were headed. And uh, you can go to California, and you, and, and you say something to someone in California about York. Oh yeah, well that's where that drag strip is. Yeah, that's what it's known for. for that's sure. exactly right. And uh, for those that don't know, we'll give a brief history of it. Uh, York was actually an airport. Yes, it was. It was an active airport, and they would they would stop flights periodically for. Uh, necessary uh, trips in and out uh, that they had uh, some of the corporate planes were headquartered there and they'd be coming in and we'd have to stop the, the drags and let them in and the people used to grumble I, I'd hear the grumbling <laughs> and, and uh, but uh, they'd love to grumble today to be able to That's say right. that and you know what when you talk to anybody that ran York oh yeah they used to shut us down when the planes came in that's so correct they remember, remember that too. well Definitely. And uh, I have photos of that where uh, the planes are coming down over, and, do. mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's amazing. I I'm working on doing a history of York US 30. I uh, you're the guy to do it. That's for sure. I've been been working on that, and I don't want to rush it, and I don't want to do it uh, in haste and miss miss any of the true facts. But I'm working on it, and hopefully in the next year I'll. I'll be able to uh, pin it down pretty good. What would you do? Would you do a DVD of it? I, I would try uh, uh, because there's so many things that are available uh, today you wouldn't think so but they are uh, of the of the newsletters and the flyers and the things that they did at York. All and, the memorabilia. Yeah, all the memorabilia and uh, I'd like to put something together that's, that, that shows all the, the history. And, and that timing tower was the most famous timing tower of Everybody any spoke. of the drag strips right. in, in the country. Yep. And uh, you, you see that Craigor Tower, you knew exactly where, where that were. was. That's a fact. And uh, it, you know, it's just amazing. And uh, you, you see the people that are here at this show. I mean, the people haven't seen one another in 20, 30 years. Right. I mean, it's just just awesome to see all the things that are happening. This this show every year it just it's, it seems to get better. Uh, the cars that are here are phenomenal. I mean, these are all the real deal. I know? had I had people tell me that yesterday that they can't believe. Of all people, Danny Jessel and Wayne Jessel, you remember them, and they have. Jessel Brothers that right. that he sells uh, performance parts to a lot of lot of cars, even running NASCAR and and circle track. And he, they were in here last evening, and they said they are absolutely amazed at the cars that have been restored and how nice these cars are. And uh, you know that's a pretty good compliment when when it comes from people like that are dealing with it on a daily basis. Darwin, you 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 every you always top shelf anyway. Uh, when you first started this, uh, 2001, it's just a, a top shelf show. I mean, this is the who's who of drag racing. And if you miss this, you know, well, hopefully they'll get a chance to see it on video. But uh, you really have to be out here. Well, it's history being relived here every second full weekend of July. Uh, we relive it, and you see the the legends of drag racing are here, and the the staff the former staff and management of, of York US 30 are here and we have we we have one terrific time in two days here and then we go up to Beaver Springs and see right. some of the cars some run. of the cars run yep. and uh, it, it's just an amazing weekend I know you have a great time but it was very emotional for you last night you got two uh, you were inducted into the legend uh, the Legion uh, Hall of Fame and uh, and then he actually gave you a trophy Yes, he did, and that, that was a surprise. I, I was not ready for that. Uh, I could tell. <laughs> it, was, it was tremendous, and, and you know, I get, I get choked up because my wife and my daughter contribute right. so much to, right. to the whole program, and I couldn't do it myself. I have, you know, I have to be honest, it's, it's not just me, it's a whole group of people, and, and uh, 
It's without the without their their assistance, we w we couldn't put this thing together. Now, there's a, a car club that uh, is of uh, assistance to you. The motor menders. Right, that's it. I the motor. Yeah. I go back with the motor menders 50 years. Uh, the motor menders uh, were one of the one of the original clubs here in York, and I formed a, a club uh, back in 1957 the Sportsters Roadster Association and the two clubs I used to work with the motor menders and we used to do activities right. we worked at the York track together as clubs and we worked at, at the former Lancaster Dragway which was which uh, preceded York uh, before Bill Holtz no. came over and took over right. the track. Right, I was just going to mention mm -hmm. his name, you stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I see, okay. But uh, uh, at any rate, that was that was the situation, and and yeah. uh, and then we we had a very good working relationship, and well, we and still so do because this is this is a, a vast undertaking. Uh, very quickly before I lose my train of thought, about how many cars? We have 175 in the inside here, and uh, well, then you have the crews outside. That's and the, the crews in outside, right. we'll have over 600 right. out there. Right, but this is magnificent. I have to tell you, uh, it's it's it's. For every minute of the four and a half hour ride it takes to come out here, I can't begin to tell you how much I've enjoyed this weekend. It's been fa fantastic. Yeah. Really, I got it. Uh, I went out to dinner last night with Bud Fauble, you know, and uh, just to see the old guys, you know, it's just it's great. Yeah, yep. It it's, really is. It's a tremendous, uh, a tremendous weekend. All the all the people that come in with their with their cars, and the cooperation that you get, you know, it takes. It takes everybody to put this whole thing together. I appreciate the the uh, cars coming and supporting right. the event, right. Right. and uh, we hope that this nostalgia well, thing will grow and grow. It's a reflection of you. I mean, they do it for you because of uh, how well you're thought of and how well you you, you were liked and, and um, what you did for, for drag racing. Well, I appreciate that, and I really do. I, that's the, I mean, that's it gets the way they're thanking you. I think. Yeah, I, I got somewhat overwhelmed last evening at the Legion of Honor Award, but right. but uh, it's all because I, I put a lot into this. Right. I put my, right. my life in, and uh, every day I work on this show. Uh, I'm working on next year's show now. Right, I know. I can't I wait. Sure. I can't wait until six months out I gotta I gotta start planning ahead and sure. and that's that's what I do and and uh, apparently it pays off because we do get the support we have nice cars we have good legends of drag racing here and Darwin it's top shelf it's I top appreciate shelf. And, hearing that believe and me. Uh, I also went and I supported your uh, the SPCA that's great. I have a little hot dog I have a little dachshund so uh, well you know. we <laughs> we are great pet lovers and uh, when we decided to do the show, uh, I felt that it should go to the SPCA because so many, many times the people overlooked uh, the animals, and there's a lot of animals out there that need some care and attention. Some attention, yes. And uh, the SPCA does not receive corporate money, and and uh, sure. so what it's we do, what we do is we they have 50/50 drawings here. And we do the people's choice with the canisters around right. the cars, and the people drop their money in there, and the one with the most money in it is the people's choice, and they get the, the proceeds. And then we have, uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, we have an auction uh, of memorabilia that will be sold, and all the proceeds from that auction go to the SPCA. Last year, we raised $5,000 for That's them. Terrific. I'm hoping... I'm hoping we can do better this year. I mean, that's always our goal is to exceed last year. Well, you know what? I know you got to run. I'm lucky I got a few minutes with you. you well, know, I appreciate been that. It's been a pleasure. I, I, thank you My so pleasure. much. My pleasure. Really, darling. You. you know, okay. we'll be looking forward to next year. Okay, you know, great. For sure. Great. He ran Dodgers in 56 and 57, with Pontiac coming on the scene in 58. We ran Pontiac, 68, 9, 6, 6, 1, 6, 2. I want to thank everybody here that has uh, uh, come to this day.